Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this webinar with the College of Legal Practice. Um, we are today presenting on what do you need to pass the SQE, an insight to our college's courses. Um, firstly, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, we're going to quickly go straight into some introductions um, so you know who is here and who is speaking to you today. So to introduce myself, I am Matt. I'm the student recruitment manager at the college. So if anybody has ever been interested in get, starting one of our courses, the chances are you might or have or will speak to me as it's my job to make sure you have an easy transition onto one of our courses. And um, next we have Sarah, I'll let Sarah introduce herself. Hello everyone, good evening and thank you for joining us. Um, I'm one of the programme leaders at the College of Legal Practice, so I'm in charge of putting on our SQE1 and SQE2 preparation courses. And just in terms of my background, I'm a corporate lawyer by background and have been in legal education for quite some years now. Thank you, Sarah. And we also have Lashan, who's one of our students. Lashan, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm an LLM full-time student with the College of Legal Practice. I am currently working part-time with the Housing Association. I currently do property law and I also am a full-time well, full mum. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Lashan. So, Lashan, um, through our kind of halfway through our presentation, we'll do a kind of a five, ten minute talk. Um, just around her experience with the college. So um, hopefully that should provide us some real fantastic insight. So Lashan, thank you for that. So to, to, to swiftly move in, um, what we're going to be talking about today, um, a variety of things. Um, we're going to be covering quite an extensive part of the SQE. So we're going to be looking into, um, firstly, who we are as a college. So you're going to get an understanding of who the College of Legal Practice is and what we stand for. We'll then be looking at the route to qualification through the SQE. Um, as a college and a postgraduate education provider towards um, qualifying as a solicitor, we only look at the SQE. We don't look at the LPC. So we'll give you an understanding of what the SQE and what that route to qualification is. We'll then look at the exams themselves. So what to expect in those exams and how they structured and what you're meant to be doing. Um, Sarah is then going to give us a really great insight into our courses. So what courses do we offer? What courses do we put on to support students uh, to become a qualified solicitor through the SQE? Um, Sarah is then going to give us a fantastic demo um, on our learning platform, um, Canvas. Uh, she's going to get, show you kind of what we do, what our learning structure is like and how you can engage on our platform. And then Lashan is going to jump in and give us a fantastic insight into her experience as a student, as she heard as, a, as somebody who's working, um, a mum, and how she applies herself to the SQE and what her journey has been so far. Um, we're then going to discuss the considerations, what you may want to think about as you um, prepare to choose how you're going to choose, uh, go into your journey for the SQE. Um, and then why choose us? What about CULP makes you, uh, or what about us helps you want to choose us when it comes to you doing your preparation courses? So, um, and then finishly, um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of finish with course dates that we have coming on, how to apply to us. So there's a nice variety in there of different things that might just stimulate your thought processes on the SQE itself, what your journey might be, and how you might need to be supported through that. So to quickly start with, who are we as a college? Um, we are a fully credited virtual postgraduate law school based in the UK. So um, I kind of highlight virtual there. That means we have no campus. We don't do any in-person teaching. All of our studying um, is done online. We are a virtual college. We um, hold um, degree awarding powers. So we do have an LLM um, that is a fully postgraduate master's. So we offer a variety of different courses. Um, and we sit part of a not-for-profit group headed by the College of Law Australia. So our parent company, in, in essence, is based in Australia, and they are the largest provider of legal education in um, Australia themselves. So we sit part of a not-for-profit group. And the not-for-profit really is a very core ethos of the college, and that's what we strive to do in everything we do. Um, you can see from our ethos, the first two points link very closely together. So we want to provide accessible and affordable legal education, um, also by facilitating increased access to the profession. So firstly, by having more affordable courses for, for people to be able to get onto, we want to be able to get more people into um, the profession and getting on the pathway to the profession, but also by offering um, flexible education, um, being at home, having different formats of study, hopefully more people can find that they can adapt themselves into um, learning on the profession. Um, we'll hear from Sarah later on, um, but obviously developing each individual's unique potential. And we do that through personal and targeted individual support. So we'll discuss later about how we teach, what our, our, our teaching structure is um, and how you engage with academics, but also your peers and how that supports you um, to get to your unique potential. 
Um, and lastly, um, we have a collegiate approach. Therefore, we still have regular contact with supervisors, tutors and other students, um, dependent on what um, program you study. So it could be, a, uh, say, a 10 week program or a 40 week. No matter how long your course is, you will always have um, consistent contact with supervisors and your peers. So there's lots of opportunity to be en engaged with other people, even studying at home. So that gives you a nice and very brief overview of the college. Um, one thing I would say before we really get into the nitty gritty detail, any questions you have, please, please throw them into the stage chat. So on the four tabs across the right hand side, you'll see stage and then under there you'll have chat. So please do um, throw some questions in as we go along um, and we'll try to answer those um, when we have points of contact for discussion. But I will now pass over to Sarah, who's going to discuss our courses in the SQE. Thank you. Lovely, Matt. Thank you. So um, first of all, just want to give you a little bit of background about the SQE model. I'm sure you're all um, aware of, of this model that came in um, last year on in September. Um, and so it really shook up the, um, the way in which you qualify to provide a, a much more flexible approach to um, qualification um, to enable more accessibility and diversity into the profession. So um, you can see there are four parts to um, qualifying as a, as a, as a lawyer under um, SQE. Um, and those, as you can see from the diagram on the left hand side, you can see that there are, are four um, squares and all of those are, are sort of principally interchangeable, principally the, um, the way in which you undertake your pathway, whether it's on a linear approach from your degree through your um, SQE exams, then you're qualifying work, work experience and then meeting the SRA suitability requirements. That could be one way of doing it, or you could really mix it up in the sense of getting your degree under your belt, then maybe um, doing your SQE1, because as you can see from the right hand side of our, of our screen, the SQE1 and SQE2 are completely separate from each other. So you don't have to do them consecutively. You could perhaps start off with SQE1, mix it up with a little bit of qualifying work experience, then go back to SQE2 and then meeting the suitability requirements before you can be admitted to the role. So there is um, very much more flexibility uh, to this model than under the previous LPC uh, one, which was much more of a lin linear progression. Just a couple of important things to note in relation to the exams. Um, probably aware of this, but it, it's worth emphasising. Um, in order to progress from SQE1 to SQE2, you have to have passed SQE1, so you can't jump straight into SQE2. Um, the only exception to that is that some there are some exemptions, uh, principally perhaps for those of you who perhaps have already got your LPC under your belt. Um, if if that applies to you, then you can go straight to SQE2 and you don't have, you can leapfrog SQE1. You don't have to um, attain SQE1 um, in that situation. The other important thing to note is the slightly different timescale in which you need to complete your exams. Um, you might be aware that under the LPC route, um, you have five years in which to complete the LPC. Um, in um, the SQE model, um, you've got six years in which to complete successfully complete both SQE1 and SQE2. And so that, as it says here, I appreciate obviously some of you might want to qualify as quickly as possible, but that does mean that you can spread out your studies and intersperse it with um, QWE qualifying work experience um, if you want. The other thing to, um, to note that's really important is um, a big change um, is that SQE1 and SQE2 are national gateway exams uh, run by one provider, which is Kaplan, on behalf of the SRA. So again, that's a, a big difference from the LPC where every um, LPC provider had their own set of exams. This now is the model of one set of national exa exams that everyone sits. So there's consistency there across the board. And as I've already mentioned, um, your QWE, you can do um, that at any time along that pathway to qualification. Um, so you can um, either do it separately from your, your exams or you can do uh, your QWE alongside studying for exams, which is what a lot of our students are doing. And indeed what Lashan is doing um, at, at the moment. She she's obviously working in a, a legal capacity, um, which will um, potentially uh, qualify as qualify work experience. So that's just a little bit of an overview of the SQE model. So now let's move on to look a little bit more in the detail of the exams themselves. 
and you've probably uh, seen a lot of press about the intensity of the exams and the challenges that the exams um, present. And I must say, sort of, we've had a few cohorts that have been through SQE1 and SQE2 now. And I must say that obviously um, it, it goes without saying that those exams are intense. And um, but the students um, who have um, been on our uh, preparation courses have said that the preparation courses set them up very well to meet those challenging um, assessments. So let's look at SQE1 first. So SQE1 um, on the left hand side is all about test testing what the SRA call their functioning legal knowledge and functioning legal knowledge is essentially um, getting to grips with 13 areas of law which are drawn not only from your um, what you would have not done, studied on the LPC, so there's LPC vocational subjects such as business and property, but also drawing on um, the foundational subjects that you would have studied as part of an, an LLB if you did um, an undergraduate law degree. So it's a huge, it's a big syllabus to get to grips with. And those um, areas of law are then tested through um, the multiple choice questions. And again, you might have had heard quite a lot of information about um, how those multiple choice questions are set up. Um, they are not um, to be underestimated. Uh, they are quite complex multiple choice questions and there is quite a lot of information and technique that you need to get to grips with. And I'm sure Lashan will be going into that as part of her experience. And we will be uh, looking at how we help you to um, tackle those MCQs um, when we look at um, our preparation courses and also when I give you a demo of our uh, learning portal. Um, just in terms of intensity, which we can't get away from, you'll see that you have to tackle 360 multiple choice questions, essentially um, over two exams, paper one and paper two. And those are broken down into two days. So on day one, where you'll be looking at um, paper one subjects, you'll be uh, looking at getting through 180 multiple choice questions over a five um, hour period. Again, broken down into to two separate um, papers of um, um, two and a half hours each. Similarly, um, on day two, um, which is usually a, a few days after day one, um, you'll be looking at paper two subjects and um, again, tackling another 180 multiple choice questions again over a five year and um, five um, hour period. So just in terms of where you can sit your SQE1 assessments, all of the SQE1 assessments are done um, at Pearson View Centres. Um, you might have come across those if you've been if you've sat your theory driving test. Um, and we've got there are about 30 locations in England and Wales at the moment um, that, again, are run by um, Kaplan on behalf of the SRA. And um, SQE1 has two assessment points in any one calendar year in January and July. Um, so the next SQE1 uh, assessment dates for 2023 will be in January. And you can see the um, exam fees that the SRA charge for you to sit SQE1, um, which are separate, completely separate from the um, fees that we charge for our preparation course. And that's something that you've got to take into account when you're budgeting. And that's something that Matt will cover uh, later on. Just moving on to SQE2. So as I say, normally your progression is obviously you need to get SQE1 under your belt before you can move on to SQE2. And um, the reason for that is because SQE2, although it is testing your written, your, your, your legal skills, um, so it's a skills based assessment, those skills have to be obviously examined in a particular context. And that is where, again, that functioning legal knowledge that you will have um, acquired through SQE1 comes into play. So each of those uh, oral and written legal skills are then examined in five practice areas, which I've put on this slide. So those are the more vocational subjects, um, which I mentioned before. So um, business, criminal, property, dispute, resolution and wills. And again, they will still those subjects will also draw on those more um, foundation subjects as well that underpin those practice areas. So you really need to um, retain that functioning legal knowledge for, from SQE1 in order to be able to be successful in tackling SQE2. 
So again, the, um, the style of assessment and the um, content of the assessment is not to be underestimated. So um, you have one exam in SQE2, um, but it consists of what they call 16 skills um, assessment stations. So there'll be 16 mini assessments which take place um, through that one exam. Um, 12 of those assessment stations are the written skills, um, and then four are the oral, oral skills. And again, those are taken, those are broken down over, uh, over essentially a five day period uh, covering those oral and written skills. So again, the written skills will be undertaken at those Pearson View centres, which are mentioned in relation to SQE1. And then the oral skills are carried out at designated centres um, in those three locations which are put on this slide. So at the moment, there are two locations in London and then one location in Cardiff and Manchester as things currently stand. Then the number of assessment um, points um, for SQE2 is slightly different um, to SQE1, um, but in terms of the next assessment dates, um, you're looking at um, April 2023, will then be followed by uh, an assessment point in July, and then um, a further point after that in October. And as you can see um, from this slide, um, there are additional um, SQE um, exam fees to pay, um, on top of the ones that you have, um, you'll be, you'll have to pay for SQE1 as well. And as it says at the bottom of this slide, and as I indicated from the previous slide, you can continue to do your qualifying work experience um, throughout your studies. Although um, the type of, for example, the type of course you decide to study on, uh, whether it's full time, part time, or or perhaps even more extended than that, will perhaps um, depend on whether you're working and the other commitments you've got. And uh, Lashan and I will bring that um, and talk a little bit more about that um, later on. So that's the exams. Um, so now let's move on to our courses and how they really help you get ready for um, those uh, SQE um, assessments. So um, looking at um, SQE1, we have a preparation course, which we call Solicitor's Legal Knowledge. And as I think I've mentioned already, we have a number of options as to the um, length or duration that it takes for you to get through the preparation course. So we've got our 13 week um, sort of intense course. We've got a 20 week course at the middle ground, and then we've got a 40 week extended extended course. And obviously the mode that you choose to study um, will depend on how much time you've got to devote, devote to your studies. So you'll see, so Matt's already um, mentioned that our course fees are very competitive and very affordable. And you can see um, um, the amount of um, course fees um, here. So you'll see um, that compared with other providers, they are um, very competitive. And that's because partly because of the fact that we are a virtually online um, provider. So therefore we don't have the same overheads as other uh, on-campus uh, providers. So, Obviously, the main purpose of um, the module is to get you ready for SQE1. So uh, we've got a range of um, videos, activities, scenarios and flashcards that um, help to get that functioning legal knowledge embedded um, into your into your minds and therefore in, and also enabling you to to recall that information that you need to be able to answer those um, SQE uh, um, assessments. So in addition to those um, retention and recall activities uh, through the scenarios and flashcards, we also expose you to a very wide range of SQE1 style MCQs so that you've had as much practice as you can to get ready for um, the uh, multiple choice questions that you're going to face in SQE1. And we uh, make sure that obviously um, you're exposed to a couple of um, assessments of the same length um, as the full um, SQE1 um, um, assessment, and then we build you up before you get to that point so that you're not overwhelmed from the start. So all of that is sort of your self-study, um, very much directed, and you'll see the way in which we um, direct that study um, in the demonstration. Um, and we obviously, obviously, we know you're online, we know you're sort of at home, as Matt says, but but we want to make sure that you do feel supported and don't feel isolated. So um, we have a number of um, whole group surgeries, which are led by our subject matter experts um, in relation to the practice areas where you can bring your questions that you may have from having um, studied a particular um, subject. 
and indeed the subject matter experts also give um, advice and guidance um, perhaps for example looking at particularly challenging um, subject matters in, in an MCQ or breaking down an MCQ so that you know how to tackle it if you've got something similar in the SQE1 uh, exam. In addition to that, we also have our town hall meetings, which uh, take place at strategic points throughout the course. Those are run by the programme and module leaders to help you plan your time um, for the week ahead and also to um, pass on generic information that's going to be important for the learning for all of the cohort. Um, and those have proved to be very uh, popular and very uh, valuable. I've already mentioned that we um, have the mock SQE1 assessments. And as I say, we build you up slowly. So we start you off with a, a, a fewer number of MCQs to tackle. And then by the end of the course, you'll be tackling um, assessments of the length that you will um, be expected to, to tackle in SQE1 itself. In addition to those full um, whole group um, uh, activities, you're also going to have um, supervisors um, who will meet you on a one-to-one -one basis. So those are 10 individual supervisions that you'll also um, receive throughout the course. And the purpose of, of those one-to-one -one, uh, personal tutor appointments is to make sure that you feel supported throughout your journey and also to provide you with guidance on engaging and making sure you're on track to um, get to a stage where you're going to be SQE ready by the end of the course. So those one-to-one -one, um, appointments are really important um, to help you with your, your progress through the course. So in addition to all of those online activities, you'll also receive um, um, 13 manuals covering those 13 uh, practice areas in both hard copy and electronic form. Um, and um, again, uh, students have found those to be very, very valuable as part of the, um, the support in getting ready for SQE1. And I've already mentioned that personal, important personal tutor support provided by your one-to-one -one supervisor. So that's SQE1. So quickly moving on to SQE2, very similar in terms of the options you've got um, for um, solicitor's legal skills, which is the preparation course for SQE2. You've got the 10-week sort of more full-time course. You've got the 20-week um, median course and then we're bringing on board a 40-week course in September 2023 for over an extended period and again you can see the course fees um, for that particular um, element of SQE preparation. So in the same way that our um, SQE 1 preparation course gets you ready for SQE, SQE um, 1, our SLS Solicitor's Legal Skills course is very much about um, obviously making sure that you not only get the real practice of all of the, um, the skills in real life um, situations, but you can also apply those fundamental legal principles in the right way um, so that you're ready to sit those 16 assessment stations within SQE2. So in order to um, help you get ready for those 16 assessment stations, we've got um, a wide range of um, activities, practice tasks and um, assessments which basically simulate the um, SQE uh, 2 assessments that you're going to sit um, um, at the end of the course. And each of those um, activities are broken down into um, 24 study units uh, covering the uh, combination of those six skills and five practice areas. So by the end of the course, you'll really, really have an in-depth um, knowledge and exposure to the uh, 24 um, practice combinations that are going to appear in the SQE2 exam. In a, alongside all the self-study, you'll also, as it says here, you'll get um, 24 practices with individual supervisor feedback. And this is a really, really important aspect of the course. Um, so essentially your 24 practices are your opportunity to do mock assessments. So um, submissions of your written tasks and um, mock interviews and mock advocacy submissions for the oral assessments in front of um, subject matter expert supervisors who will then um, give you written and oral feedback in individual one-to-one -one feedback sessions. So again, those um, are take place throughout the um, throughout the course, um, and again, students have found those to be very valuable. At the end of the course, um, you will have um, six SQE2 style assessments. So again, 
Um, those will be the end of module assessments, but they'll also prepare you for SQE2. Obviously, it's really important to keep on top of that uh, functioning legal knowledge. So we make sure that as part of um, your um, access uh, on um, SQE2 preparation, that you have access to all of those um, SQE1 preparation resources to make sure that you can refresh and consolidate that, that functioning, legal, functioning legal knowledge. That's all online. You'll also have the same uh, group and individual support as um, on the um, solicitor's legal knowledge. So you've got um, individual supervisions, not only from your subject matter expert, but also from your personal tutor, one-to-one -one supervisor, who will be there to guide you, support you and encourage you and help you with your progression throughout the course. In addition um, to um, some uh, surgeries in the different practice areas. So you get two surgeries per practice area and then the whole group um, town hall meetings in the same way as for SQE uh, 1. In addition, and lastly, and important, not, not least, um, you'll also get provided with a hard copy of our skills guide, which provides a really good little handbook in relation to how you should approach each of the skills with some guidance and tips on how to tackle the assessments. And you'll get that both in hard copy and electric, electronic format. So that's an overview um, in whistle stop tour of our um, SQE uh, preparation courses. So, of course, um, obviously, you can undertake both our SQE 1 prep and SQE 2 prep as um, standalone courses just to get ready for those national exams. But you can also wrap them up in an LLM in legal practice uh, um, uh, program, which is obviously what Lashan is doing, and that's proven to be um, very popular, not least because, as it says on here, um, the um, if you do wrap up your studies um, in an LLM, then um, you're likely to be eligible for that postgraduate master's loan from Student Finance England. So um, if you do choose to um, follow that model, um, then you can do the LLM either on a one year full time basis or a two year part time basis. And you'll see that we punctuate SQE1 and SQE2 um, with some transactional modules. And that's to give a breathing space um, between obviously your SQE1 exam, getting your results from your SQE1 exam, which will then enable you to, to, to step onto the next bit of your SQE2 prep and SQE2. So your transactional modules um, fit in the middle between sort of, as I say, SQE1 and SQE2. And those transactional modules, as you can see from, from, the, um, from this slide, um, there's a range of um, more commercial type modules and more... Um, sort of um, private practice uh, type type modules, such as family and employment and personal injury. So we're, we're, they're designed to give um, students uh, the exposure to a wide range of um, uh, business activities. And you choose three out, um, out of those uh, transactional modules um, that would form part of your LLM. And they're designed to give you a real insight um, into um, uh, those uh, that type of legal work in order to get you ready for the workplace. Alongside um, your SQE2 prep, you'll also start your um, your capstone research project. So very much akin to um, a dissertation um, um, in other institutions. Although we do um, like to have it um, a very practical focus, uh, and, it, and it usually follows on from from one of the transactional modules um, that you've studied. So you're looking at a particular aspect of of the transactional module, perhaps that you found interesting or that you think would be a really good point to research in more detail. So that's the LLM in legal practice. So moving on to our graduate foundation in law. So um, obviously a lot of people will be coming on to the, uh, either the LLM or the SQE1 or SQE2 preps, having already um, studied law at an undergraduate level. But as you're probably aware, um, the SRA no longer require um, people who, who want to go onto the SQE1 pathway to have a law degree before they tackle SQE1 and SQE2. However, we recognise that those people who are um, graduates in other disciplines um, will find it very difficult 
to um, tackle that intense SQE1 syllabus, those 13 practice areas, without having had some foundation in those academic subjects that you would otherwise have studied um, on a law degree. So we have come up with our graduate foundation in law, which is very much designed to put non-law graduates on the same, um, at the same point of entry as um, law graduates um, before they come on to SQE1. We recognise that obviously it's very much a stepping stone. Um, so what we have done is we have taken what would have been normally a one or two year courses um, under the old regime, um, the graduate um, diploma in law, and we have turned that into either a 20 week um, or a 40 week course. And um, essentially, we recognise that you that people want to go on that accelerated route to get themselves ready as quickly as possible for SQE1 preparation. We've also uh, made sure that the Graduate Foundation in Law is very much um, designed with the SQE in mind. Um, so it's very much got that focus of the SQE1 syllabus, and it's very much introducing you to the very much uh, practical side of law, as well as some of the academic um, aspects that you would have studied as an undergraduate. So if you do decide to um, go for our Graduate Foundation in Law, then very similar um, to our SQE1 and SQE2 preparation courses, you'll get full access to um, the uh, Canvas Learning Portal, uh, together with all of the, the similar sort of uh, materials that you would expect to receive um, from an online environment. So you get access to multimedia presentations and uh, lots of preparation materials to get you ready um, for um, interactive workshops. So uh, the Graduate Foundation in Law is slightly different from the uh, format of SQE1 and SQE2. Um, so um, you would do preparation, which would then feed into um, interactive online workshops lasting two hours with a um, subject matter expert practitioner, as it says on here. And that will enable you to do group work with other students, given the more academic bent of the of the course and enable you obviously to um, discuss those areas that you have brought um, to the workshop, having done the preparation, not only with other students, but also with your um, your tutor as well. You'll be exposed to, as it says here, a range of case studies and client matter areas. Um, again, to start building on that practical uh, approach to, um, to looking at law, and which will then feed nicely into um, the style of um, case study and client matters that you will be exposed to on the SQE1 and SQE2 courses. Similarly to SQE1 and SQE2, you'll also have uh, virtual town hall meetings with the programme and module leaders, and you'll also get given hard copy and electric, electronic versions of the um, manuals that make up the foundation course. So the six um, foundation subjects, um, you'll, get, you'll get manuals on each of those subjects. And essentially, that is all the material you need. We don't expect you to go out and buy other books or other resources to um, enable you to study on any of our courses, whether that's the graduate foundation or indeed SQE1 and SQE2, you're provided either in hard copy or online with all the resources that you need. And similarly, where the um, level of support is really one to one support is really important. You'll also be assigned um, to a personal tutor on the Graduate Foundation who will again help you um, pr progress throughout the programme. So that's our Graduate Foundation in Law, which obviously will be attractive to um, non-law graduates. And as you can see um, from here, you'll also get 10 percent off um, uh, off your SQE one preparation course um, as an alumni if you progress from um, graduate foundation to either our SQE one prep or LLM programs. So I am now going to hand back to I've done enough talking, so I'm going to hand back to, to Matt, um, who is going to give a little bit more. So what we just wanted to do, uh, just to give you an understanding of the breakdown, what we find is, and especially when we speak to lots of um, prospective students, now that could be a prospective student who's a current undergrad or prospective student who is a current working professional with a family, never have a, a clear understanding of what the fee and course um, cost might be. 
Um, so what we've tried to do with this slide is really break down and show an understanding of what it costs to qualify as a solicitor um, through the SQE. Now, um, the, uh, the main difference here that we find with the LPC is the SQE route is cheaper. Um, it costs less um, as what you'll find with a, uh, the LPC is you pay your education provider um, for the education and the exams that you sit, um, whereas obviously as, as um, Sarah's highlighted, the exams are sat with uh, CAP plan and national exams on behalf of the SRA. So what you can see on the left hand side of the screen um, is what you would expect to pay as a law graduate. So um, if you wanted to do um, prep courses by themselves, you would find um, a total with us plus the exam fees is £8,215. Um, that is just a straight three for your SQE1, SQE2 um, preparation courses and then your exam fees on top. Um, what's worth noting is we have we have costed this as passing your SQE1 first time and your SQE2 first time. Um, there are certain stipulations around SQE exams um, that um, if you if you fail the first time and you need to rebook for a second time, there's no change in cost. They cost the exact same again. So it's worth keeping that in mind. But this is how we've costed it. Um, or you can choose to sit an LLM. Um, so if you sit our LLM and, the, and, and sit the exams at the same time, it's 11,015. Now, Sarah touched on it briefly. If you are within Student Finance England region, so if you're, if you're studying within England, you could be entitled to student finance funding of up to, I think it's 11,888 or around that ballpark um, for, to cover your, your fees. Now, what's great with studying with us just from a financial perspective, you can see that the cost of your exams and your LLM uh, where you get a full postgraduate master's is all covered under um, that student finance. Um, and what is even better is there are some hidden fees with studying the exams um, through the SQE. Travel, so you've got to travel to one of the places. Um, often the exams are over a number of days, so you need to pay for accommodation. That remaining £800 that you have left over from studying with us might cover those fees as well or those costs that you you'll find that you're having to um, cover to be able to go and travel and then sit these exams on the right hand side um, is for a non-law graduate so for somebody who is wanting to transfer into law again this could be a current undergraduate student or postgraduate student um, or somebody who's been working in a different profession for x number of years this is what we would advise you would need to look at so, so our gfl our prep courses and the sra exams would cost you just over eleven thousand pounds um, if you wanted to do our GFL and then our LLM and the um, exam fees is 13,575. Now that obviously that GFL adds a slight extra cost, um, but that cost is there to really make sure that you're on a level playing field with everybody else going towards those exams, that we make sure that you are a, a suitable level of knowledge of the, the foundation areas of law in England and Wales to get you right on track to be able to best succeed. And again, as Sarah touched on, that GFL is guided and geared towards the SQE. So it has everything SQE in mind ready. So hopefully that transition onto an SQE prep course or an LLM that focuses on the SQE, you feel much better and much prepared. You can see we've then just provided a breakdown of each of those fees. So there's a single fee per um, kind of construct of those total um, payments that you would find that you would have. So we hope that gives you a nice understanding of what the cost of um, qualifying through the SQE and at least the exams um, would cost you. Up next, um, we are going to have a course demo by Sarah. So she's going to open up our um, Canvas learning platform, which is going to give you a quick whiz through what you can expect. OK, thank you, Matt. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hopefully share my screen. So this works. And what um, I'm going to share with you is um, just a, a little bit of a demo of our of, of part of our SQE1 course. So that's Solicitor's Legal Knowledge. So um, if you've enrolled on one of our courses, and Lashan can um, go into this in a bit more detail when she um, uh, speaks, um, is um, you'll you'll always land on a on a home page, which is essentially our um, go-to uh, page for all the essential information about the course and I'm not going to go into to great detail about this but um, um, this is sort of your, your landing page if you like from where you can um, have a look at all the different modules, have a look at um, any uh, course announcements, um, all the discussion boards which are set up um, with, for the different practice areas. So all that information is um, accessible from this, this, this first home page. 
but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, show you an example of how you would learn um, on the um, SQE1 preparation course. So as we've said, um, you um, have got 13 um, different practice areas, which you can see at the bottom, if you scroll down to the bottom of the, um, the home page, and they're all broken down into units. Um, so each um, subject area um, will be a unit, and I'm gonna focus on unit seven because it's my area of law. I've, I've chosen something that I've, um, I'm familiar with. So I'm gonna focus on unit seven, which is business law and practice, which is obviously one of those 13 um, practice areas. So if you clicked on that, and I'm not gonna do that, I've already done that, but if you clicked on, on that, you'd be taken uh, to this module um, page here. And again, it will show you that it breaks down the syllabus in relation to business law and practice into a number of bite-sized subunits. So we're not expecting you to get to grips with what can be quite a complex um, uh, legal subject um, in one go. We break it down into a number of components. So you can see the business syllabus is pretty big. It's one of the, the biggest on, on the SQE uh, uh, assessment spec. But you can see we break it down into 20 different um, segments um, and we exp um, what we will do is we will guide you as to when at what point in the course we would like you for example to look at business 7.1 then we will give you guidance on the next aspect on so on and so forth so that you're building up that knowledge um, throughout the course so it's not um, as overwhelming so I'm going to take you to um, one unit called um, incorporation of a company. So how do I set up it? If I've got a client who comes in who wants to set up a company, what are the legal issues that I need to, what as a, a solicitor I need to um, give them? So we're just going to look at um, business subunit 7.4, incorporation of a company. So if I click on that, and hopefully this will work, you again will be taken to a landing page. And the landing page is for every um, subunit whether that's for business or any of the other um, practice areas, all look very similar and all have the same structure in terms of the resources that are available to you and guide you in exactly the same way through that subunit. So um, every subunit will have an introductory uh, part. Um, and that, for, for example, in the relation to this, the introduction here explains what you'll be looking at. So we're looking at all the procedures and documentations that you need to think about if you want to incorporate a company. Once you've got that overview of what you're going to be covered, you'll then be taken to the first resource, which, um, as you'll see here, is a video that we ask you to watch. Um, alongside the video, there's always a transcript that accompanies the video. So sometimes you might find you're a little bit short of time and it might might not have enough time to watch the video in full. So you've always got the transcript that you can look through if that's easier for you. We'll then direct you, um, as I said, to, to, those, um, business, to those manuals and we'll ask you to read um, the relevant section of the uh, manual in relation to business law. And you'll see that the reference to the business law uh, section of the manual always corresponds with the number of the subunit, again, to help with that navigation and for ease of reference, so that you know if you're looking at incorporation of um, a company, you know that you need to jump to um, chapter 7.4 in the business manual. So again, you can go to that in hard copy, you might want to make some notes on that, or you can go to it um, via uh, the online environment with the PDF. Once you've done your reading, we then obviously want you to um, see how much of that reading you have retained and how much of that then becomes embedded. So there are a number of different activities to help you with that retention and understanding of the legal principles within that reading. And one of the ways in which we do that is through our drag and drop activities. Um, very straightforward. Um, so I'll just quickly um, show you this activity. So we've got someone who wants to set up a company um, with um, a couple of people, Vanessa and Katie. And essentially, um, we need to test their knowledge about um, the sorts of things that they need to think about if they're going to set up a new company. So all we need to do, and I'm not even going to do this in the right order, um, I'm going to do some in the right order and some in not. So all you need to do is read through um, the, the scenario and then pick the right um, phrase or word that fits in with what they want to do. So I'm just going to show you how this works, just so that you can um, see. So you just drag it here and you can see that um, 
you've got a number of things here and then you can check your understanding um, by clicking on this and you can see oh right I've got two right and I've got three wrong and that will then um, enable you to either retry so if you want to have another go or it will show you if you click on that it will show you the correct solution um, so that you can see what you got wrong and why you got wrong why you got it wrong so that's one way of um, making sure you understand the principles. We then move on to the flashcards, which are more about embedding that knowledge and making sure that you can recall it, recall the principles. You'll see here that there are a number of flashcards, so there'll always be more than one. And the one that I'm going to just quickly um, look at is the first flashcard, scenario one, because it's quite an interesting one. So somebody wants to um, acquire a chain of coffee shops and they want to call their, their company Starbucks. OK, so straight away, you might just obviously from knowing that there is already a, an organization called Starbucks. Um, hopefully that will help you to identify that that is going to be one of the issues with the company name. So that might be something you might um, have acquired from your knowledge. But then obviously you need to just have a think about what are the other issues that might be a problem. Have a think about that. Then you can turn the card over um, and you'll find the answer. Um, to, to, that, um, to that question. So two points, obviously, the fact it's sim already too similar to um, Starbucks, but also the fact that obviously, if you're going to set up a, a private limited company, the company must always have the word limited in its, in, in its name. So again, you can go back to these as often as you want to help with that, reinforce that embedding of that knowledge. And then the final type of activity that we, um, we offer is the uh, multiple choice uh, test. Oh, what's happened? Um, my um, my screen doesn't seem to have the multiple choice questions anymore, which is a real shame. Um, but what I will do, um, I will. I can't see if I can refresh. That's. I'll just go um, back up and see if I can go to it from a different way. So the final part of the jigsaw, which is the sort of important part of the jigsaw, is to enable you to obviously start to test yourself in relation to the style of MCQs that are going to appear in that SQE, um, SQE1 exam. So we always make sure, I'll just wait for it to load, we always make sure that at the end of each subunit, you have the opportunity to um, test your knowledge via the multiple choice questions. And it's not working. Oh, no, hang on a minute, let's just have a look. No, it's not working, unfortunately. Um, let me just see if I go out of student view, see if that makes a difference. But just in terms of those, oh, yes, that's great. So just in terms of those multiple choice um, questions, we're starting to um, expose you to the type of questions that you could face um, in the SQE1. Um, as I say, there's usually about uh, 10 MCQs per subunit, and those are in addition to the mock um, assessments which we um, expose uh, students to throughout the course in that sort of uh, run up to getting to the end of the course and being in a position to complete 90 questions within that two and a half hours. So let me just um, show you how this works. So um, it's going to take you to uh, question three. Um, so always, always, um, all of the MCQs have five options. Um, because that is the way in which the SQE1 MCQs are designed. There'll be a stem, so the stem of the question, uh, which contains the facts, could be, could be long or it could be short as it is here. And then there are, there are always five options, and all of those options are in principle plausible. And what you're looking to do is pick the best fit, the best single answer that fits with the, um, with the circumstances of your scenario. So I am just going to show you. So you could pick this one here. Um, check your answer. And um, always in relation to the MCQs, where you've got your answer wrong, it will explain why your answer is incorrect and will then take you to the section of the, of the manual that you'll need to read in order to go back and refresh that legal knowledge. Again, let's have another go. You can retry it. So let's try this one this time recheck it and again that's great that tells you 
again you're correct but not only just you're correct but why you're correct as well and again refers you back to the relevant section of the manual so um, that's the process that applies for all of the subunits that you'll be studying um, throughout those 13 practice areas and um, I think the exposure to all those different types of activities is really important in terms of helping you sort of acquire retain and then um, uh, um, sort of uh, obtain that uh, knowledge um, back um, to be able to answer the MCQs is really, really important. And I'm sure that that's something that uh, Le Chern is going to, to touch on now uh, when she gives you her insights into her progression to date and also her um, experience on the course to date. I'll stop sharing. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah. So, I'm sorry uh, about the technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not worry. Do not worry. Um, so as uh, Sarah said, what she's going, uh, what we're going to do now is Lashan's going to jump in and give us a little bit of um, firstly intro to herself and her journey that she's gone on so far on her to becoming a solicitor. So Lashan, all over to you. You're still muted, Lashan. You just need to find the little unmute button on the screen. Lashan has. Uh, oh, here we go. She should be back. See if that Hello, works. can everyone hear me? <laughs> there we go. All over to you, Lashan. Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to tell you about my journey so far um, in terms of, for example, why I decided to get into law and how it's going for me. So I actually graduated with my LLB honours in 2017, and I was working, um, working part-time while studying, and it was quite difficult for me to get legal experience. So um, my first job that I got offered, I actually applied for a role within um, a housing association as um, an admin. So I was going to work as a legal coordinator. That was for me just to kind of get my foot in the door, just to kind of see if maybe I take this role, it will lead on to um, other roles as a paralegal. And actually, when I applied for that role, um, the director of that team um, was very impressed with my application. And I also had a law degree at the time. So she said, actually, I want to create a new role for you and I want you to be our junior paralegal of the team. And I think for her, it was kind of setting up her whole her new structure of her legal team within that housing association because it was quite new. So I was kind of, I was very excited. I was over the moon. I was like, wow, I can't believe this. I didn't expect it because I literally just wanted to get my foot in the door and was just going to do admin. And I was happy with that. But the fact that I actually got what I wanted without even trying in a, in a sense, um, was great for me. So I, I've, I've been there for about four years now. And for me, my I just wanted to progress within the team and I wanted to um, start my LPC at the time, um, the S3 wasn't sort of. So I wanted to start my LPC and it was quite difficult for me because they didn't do training contracts. And then when they decided to introduce a training contract within the organization, I got pregnant with my son. So when it came to applications and applying, it was it was kind of late for me, I missed that boat. So then I thought, okay, what am I going to do next? I don't want to be stuck. I've got a law degree. I really want to finish and qualify as a solicitor. So then I thought, okay, the SQE, I think, might be the best route for me because I have qualifying work experience. I'm working full time um, within a property team. And um, so I've, I've kind of ticked that box off. And also, um, I'm, I think when I started the course with um, the College of Legal Practice, it kind of rang back and started refreshing all the knowledge that I've learned whilst working and also from university five years ago. So for me, I think choosing to do the SQE, especially the LLM was the best thing because it was it's more flexible in terms of the fact that, you know, I, the LPC is, is quite expensive compared to um, the LLM. And also I get the postgraduate funding loan, which is great for me because having a young son, you know, it's quite difficult, you wanna save money, and you just want to make sure you're, you're financially stable. So that's the reasons why I kind of decided to go for um, the College of Legal Practice. And that was my journey in deciding, you know, I've got to, I've got to start the S3 somewhere. So I started looking at different um, providers and it was quite difficult because there was quite a few, quite a, quite a few very expensive as well. And uh, I think I started the course with um, the College of Legal Practice two weeks late because I was so unsure, but I was like, if I don't do this now, it's not going to get done. Or I'm going to have to wait and the fees are going to go up. So then I was looking around at different providers. I think for me, the College of Legal Practice, the fees were great. Um, I also, like I said, I could get the postgraduate loan. I also, it was very flexible for me. So once I went back to work after maternity leave, which was in August this year, 
um, I was doing part time, which worked for me and my son. So I didn't miss out spending time with him. And then also for the course. So I chose to do the LLM full time course because I was working part time, which was great. It fits in very well with um, a work life balance and also spending time with my son. And um, and yeah, so for me, that was the reasons why um, I decided to choose the College of Legal Practice. And also, I think the fact that they had live surgery which was a big factor for me because a lot of other providers, they didn't have live surgeries. They were pre-recorded. So you couldn't jump in and ask questions if you were confused. And also the fact they had a variety of different MCQ questions, which actually are similar to what the SRA provide in the exam. And that's very useful because for example, what I'm doing now on the course is what well, within the last four weeks, we've been doing mock assessments. So, we started off with 25 questions and then we've gone on to um, 35 questions. Then now I'm on 75 questions, which is great in terms of it builds you up to be ready for timing when it comes to the actual exam, because you, you have 90 questions in the exam, two hours and a half, and that, that gets you ready and prepared for the exams. And I'm not sure from looking at them, what the other providers offered, I don't think they offered that. So for me, that was great in terms of helping me feel supported. And also I think the one-to-ones are wonderful as well because you have someone who actually engages with you and tells you, you know, what you need to work on, what um, what else, what you're doing well, how, how well you're doing. And also I think um, giving you feedback about maybe exam tips, revision tips. For example, um, my tutor specifically said to me, if I'm struggling in certain areas, see where my weakness is and then go back to the manual which the college provides you with and look at the key points. And if the key points, you feel like you understand it very well, then kind of, you know, skip that area. And if you don't understand key points in another subunit, then maybe go into that one in a bit more depth so you're not wasting time and constantly reading, 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 because sometimes for some people reading is not a good way to revise. So I'm definitely really enjoying the course and I would recommend it um, compared to other providers simply because of that and my experience so far has been great. Um, and I'm really enjoying it actually. And I feel like the content is amazing. It, it gives you in-depth knowledge and they also have discussion boards. I'm not sure if you could see on Canvas um, when Sarah was showing um, everyone the demo, but they have discussion boards. So if you miss a live surgery, for example, and you can't ask questions in that surgery, you can go back to the discussion board and also ask questions there and then they'll get back to you and give you the answer on where you may need to look have more in-depth um, research or revision. So yeah, that was that was great for me. Um, I don't know if I um, need to expand on anything else. Um, I'm try <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> I think I've been rambling on. <laughs> uh, Sean, that is absolutely brilliant. I think you've touched on a couple of things there that I just want to ask you about briefly. Um, I think, yeah. firstly, um, you spoke about all the different kind of formats of support through supervisor, the surgeries that you found useful, discussion boards. It would be great for you to expand on, uh, I, guess, I guess, the process of how each stage of joining the college was the support there that you found needed to get you onto the course. So did you ever need uh, a chat with an academic when you spoke to um, professional service staff? How, how did you find that? Um, so like I said previously, it was quite difficult because I was going through a few providers. So I actually did speak to Ben when applying for the course and he was very nice. He was very helpful. Um, originally, I wasn't sure who I was going to go with. And he kind of helped me make that decision in the sense where he made me feel very comfortable and I could ask questions. And I think for me, I felt like I was being quite annoying because I kept calling like, oh, can I do this? Or how does this work? And um, yeah, that was that was very useful for me. And I just feel like you know, they just make you feel comfortable. And, you know, that was, that was for me, that was like a no-brainer. I just got help all around. And for example, applying for student finance, any questions I had about that, because I, have, I haven't done that in five years since studying at um, university. So that was um, great for me. That sounds great. I think also as well, you, you touched really nicely on your personal situation. So in, involving your work, involving your family life and trying to manage and juggle all that. How do you find the, the structure of the course for the LLM, you applying yourself to that whilst actually letting the course apply itself to kind of your life and your personal life and your professional life? How do you find that that balance works? Um, I think it works great for me. Um, like I said, it's very flexible. So for example, if I miss maybe a week um, a week's worth of work, I can always catch up. 
and it's quite easy for example like I said I did start the course two weeks late and I caught up quite quickly you just have to be very determined and focused and I think it, it gives you that time and no one judges you for example when you have your one-to-ones if you are behind because you know you know you're living your usual day-to-day life things happen for example my my son he might get sick one day and for me, that delays maybe my revision, but you always have time to catch up, which is great for me. Amazing. So I don't know if you had any questions you wanted to ask, um, Sean, but I, I think what we've had from your Sean there is really fantastic and insightful. I think, yeah, I think that that, that was a lovely insight, uh, LaShawn, and I'm really pleased uh, that you're enjoying the course so so much. And um, um, in particular, just one thing, um, so in terms of the, um, those, because this is something that students ask us, in terms of those interactive exercises on on Canvas for each of the subunits, uh, which are the ones that you you like the most from your own personal learning perspective? I think for me, it's the MCQs, because mm -hmm. I feel like it gets you ready for the exam. And there's, there's like, I think there's over 18,000 questions. So, you know, you have a variety and you can always go back to them and it tells you at the end, for example, if there's 10 questions for them, because it tells you how much you get right out of that 10. So for me, that kind of shows me my weaker areas and my strongest areas. So I can always go back and I can revise and I can say, you know, for example, maybe I'm not so strong in this subunit in criminal, but I'm very strong within land law. So I don't need to keep going over that section. Mm -hmm which obviously helps you in terms of you're not wasting time revising on areas that are not like, you know, that you're not, you're strong in. So, for me, that was great. And also I think the videos, I also actually, I know you mentioned the transcript from the videos. For me, that was very helpful. So what I would do is I would print them out and kind of make my own little folder just to kind of have a summary of that subunit, even though it also is um, expanded on in the manuals as well, which is very useful. Yeah, I think that's um, really great because it gives you a sort of a, um, a nice go easy go to place just to sort of again keep that knowledge in your mind doesn't it you can go to the transcript have a look at that quickly without having to flick all your way through the through the manual so it's um yeah it's lots of mix and match um uh, sort of approaches that you can use to really sort of maximize your learning in the in the space in the time that you've got as well definitely Lashan, thank you so much for that that has been absolutely brilliant and um, what's key i think for, for everybody to know is those who are with us um, a copy of the recording and the slides will be sent out. So obviously Lashan's gone into some fantastic detail there about her experience. So if you want to be able to go back and listen to that, and um, we will be sending out the recording so you can access and hear it back. So, um, but if you have any questions for Lashan, please do pop them in the chat or, or Sarah. But now we're going to carry back on um, with some more info about the college and the support we provide. So I should pop my screen back on. And hopefully there we go so um what this slide does articulate really nicely is the support that we provide we've touched on it in different slides at different points and kind of drip fed it in but this now kind of gives you the the, the overall holistic approach to how we support students at the college so firstly we have a dedicated um college student services team so just like a university that you would study at we have a support services team who are there to support you with reasonable adjustment applications, questions about your application, um, instalment payments and fees, um, that, that team is there ready to support you. Um, and they are absolutely fantastic. Um, we have teams at each point that you might engage with. So I sit part of the student recruitment team, so you might speak with us. Um, Lashan mentioned about she kept calling and speaking to somebody on the phone. That was me. Me and Lashan spoke plenty of times on the phone before she, she, she joined us. So we're always there to answer if it's email, if it's phone call, through to then the student services team who are there to support you whilst you're with us, along with the academic team. We then have IT and wellbeing support. So our IT support is every day. And I think the only day they take off, bless them, is um, Christmas Day. Um, so they're there to support you with any IT um, needs that you might have. So if you're struggling to log into Canvas, your email's not working. Um, there's a variety of different things they're there to help with. But we also have free wellbeing support. So um, we understand that obviously we don't provide an on-campus experience. And as much as we try to do with the collegiate approach, sometimes you may need support and um, support outside of what an academic or a professional professional um, staff can provide you. So we provide free wellbeing support as well. Lashan beautifully touched on the student discussion forums. We have multiple different uh, discussion boards and forums that you can access to ask questions, speak with your peers, speak with your uh, academics. So they're there to be able to open up a little bit of dialogue and conversation outside of um, Zoom meetings that you might have as for your surgeries or your town halls. Um, the town halls, 
Um, like uh, fo like um, Sarah said, focus on the week ahead and at strategic points throughout your course. So usually around assessments, build up to um, the um, SQE exams. They're there. There's more full cohort led by the program leader to support you in preparation for what's coming up in that week ahead. And um, you have the surgeries focus on practice areas. Um, I won't go into too much depth in these as Sarah's already gone through those, but they're there much more to focus on the academic part of your course. And then you have your one to one supervisor and personal tutor sessions again, there to support you just the understanding of your knowledge, where maybe do you need a little bit of further support on um, and also just more pastoral support. Um, how are you getting on? Are you OK? Um, how is your, your kind of your week looking, making sure that you're OK, engaging with the programme as well. So that gives you a nice understanding of our holistic approach to our, our college. Um, what we do have, especially for our SQE 1 program, is um, our SQE Ready Pledge. Now, we put this in place um, to, to ensure that students who go through our programs feel that we are there to support you and make sure that you have the best chance to, to pass the SQE. Um, we're not here to take your money, teach you, and then leave you be. And um, We want to make sure that you have the best opportunity to pass the SQE and get into that profession and start practicing as a solicitor at the best time that you can. So we will support you through every step of the way with your one to one supervisor and personal tutor support. And we believe we have one of the highest levels of one to one tuition support. And that tuition support is there to support you on feedback, on um, uh, maybe revision techniques that you need to consider to make sure that you're getting the best out of the course. And we'll also give you an SQE ready review at the end of your programme. Um, so what this will do is um, you'll sit down with an academic and we'll, they'll basically advise you on the likelihood of you passing the SQE assessment based on your performance through the assessments and our course. And if we don't feel that you are ready to go for the SQE assessment itself, we will not recommend you do that. We want you to have the best opportunity. So what we will do post um, that exam um, or our course, sorry. And if we have recommended that you don't and you take some extra time to revise, you'll still have continued access to our Canvas learning platform. So all of the MCQs, all of the flashcards, all of the drop drag questions, videos, podcasts, everything you'll still have access to. Um, so you can continue to revise and build up that knowledge um, and then go forward for the SQE exam when um, you feel much more comfortable and ready to be able to go forward for it. So those are just a couple of things that we do to make sure that we put you in the best place possible to pass it. We don't want you to spend unnecessary finances to sit it again and again. So I believe now Sarah is going to pop back in and just talk you through some considerations that you may want to think about when uh, looking at SQE preparation. Over to you, yeah. Sarah. Thanks. Yeah. And I think, um, to be fair, I think Lashan has already touched on these already um, through what she's spoken about. And I think it breaks down into sort of four key areas is sort of where are you in terms of your knowledge? Um, and some of the things you might want to think about is how long ago uh, did you last study law? You might never have studied law before. So your current level of knowledge um, is not where it needs to be. So you might need to think about the, the GFL first. So think about your sort of knowledge base, um, because that's a, a key consideration. You need to hit the ground running when it comes to SQE1. Um, so that's a really important consideration. The other, the next one is um, is how much time have you got uh, to devote to your studies? And again, Lashan's already sort of devote, um, touched on this already. You know, if you might be working, you might have commitments, uh, family commitments, uh, childcare commitments. So you have really got to think carefully about how much time you've got to study. And that's going to really sort of um, dictate perhaps um, the type of the length of the course that you're going to um, come on to. Uh, the, 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 the shorter courses are obviously much more intense. Um, so if you are short of time, you might want to think about one of the longer courses, such as the 20 or 40 week um, courses. Um, so in terms of how much time you've got, you might also want to think about how quickly you want to qualify. You might already have all your QWE under your belt and therefore you want to get admitted to the role as quickly as possible. So that again might dictate uh, the length of course that, you, that you're looking at. And then um, the other thing is if you are working, obviously there will be um, times in the week that you do need to, to take out to devote to your studies. Whilst obviously the college is very flexible because a lot of the learning is online, um, so you can fit that around your work and other commitments. There are obviously touch points um, with your one to one supervisor or your SME supervisor where you will need to um, sort of um, meet face to face. And obviously, um, if you can get the support of your employer in doing that, then obviously that's going to be very beneficial for you. Obviously, um, I think we've mentioned all of the group activities such as the surgeries and the town hall meetings 
are recorded so that as Lashan says if you're not able to make the live session you can watch the recording back but time is an important consideration we've already talked um, a lot about finances and obviously thinking about how much support you need obviously Matt's given you an indication of the overall college fees and SQE um, fees so obviously that needs to be factored into your thinking and um, obviously um, part of that might be thinking um, can I do it on a standalone basis have I got my finances in order that I can finance myself or perhaps do I need the um, support of a, of, of a student loan in which case obviously you're looking more at the LLM and then you're thinking about things like time and QWE alongside that as well obviously you might be um, really um, lucky and have the support of um, a, a, an employer or someone else who can um, sort of help you or sponsor you through the course so again um, that's something else to think about as well and lastly I think that another big thing and, and that's a, an important thing for your um, a SQUE journey is um, your QWE when are you going to do your QWE as I said you might already be doing that and obviously Lashan is an example of that um, she's doing uh, her QWE alongside her studies um but you know is that something that you need to think about in which case that feeds then into your time but also feeds into your knowledge because as Lashan said the, the knowledge you get in practice can then feed into your studies as well um so those are the four considerations i've picked up on some of the bullet points and um, not all of them but i think that's given you a nice flavor of some of the things that you really do need to think about carefully before embarking on your um sqe journey So um, just in terms of um, how those um, considerations feed into which course is right for you, we've just here sort of brought those, um, brought those um, together on this slide. Um, so we've got, as I've mentioned already, we, we've got the three categories, if you like, of course. So you've got the, the intensive course, which is either be the 13 weeks on the SLK and 10 weeks on the SQE2 preparation course. So really, um, if you are thinking of embarking on that, that course, you really do need to be able to study full time. If you're working full time um, and you've got other commitments as well, that intensive course is probably not going to be a practical option for you. So you do really need to think about the time you've got available. Obviously, you might decide that you're going to sacrifice uh, your personal personal life because you want to qualify as quickly as possible. But if you do, if that is for you, then obviously you do need to think about the time commitment that you need to, to make. Um, it might also um, feed into obviously uh, qualifying as quickly as possible it might be because you've already completed your QWE. So you want to get onto the role as quickly as possible. So if you are looking at the intensive course, you are looking at really a sort of another full time job um, on top of perhaps other work that you're doing. So you are looking to spend about 30 hours of learning a week. So it is intense, as the name suggests. Then move on to the sort of middle ground, which we call the flex. So that's a 20 week course on both our SQE1 and our SQE2 uh, preparation. So this might be more suitable to you if you have got other work and personal commitments that you need to obviously juggle alongside your studies. And that um, flexible course, um, it will enable you to progress at a, at a steady pace. It's still quite a lot of learning a week. You'll see here we're looking at about 15 hours a week. But it will be quite as obviously as intense as that shorter um, course. So it will enable you to progress at a, a steadier pace. And it, it will also enable you to complete some of your QWE alongside um, your studies as well. And then finally, we've got our extended course of 40 weeks. Obviously, that's available now in relation to the SLK, our, our SQE1 prep, and it's coming on board for our SQE2 prep in September next year. And this is probably really going to be suitable for you if you've got a really high level of external commitments. Um, so you really do need um, to have that more extended um, learning period to enable you to fit everything in into that week. We're looking here about pr approximately eight hours of learning a week. Um, it might also be suitable if you studied your law quite a while ago, so you need to get back up to speed with that functioning legal knowledge. So that extra time will give you time in between the sessions to, to, to sort of get up back up to speed um, with where you need to be. And, and similarly, perhaps um, you've only just com completed your conversion program if you're a non-law uh, graduate. So again, you might need a little bit of extra time to be able to consolidate what you've learned and get that other knowledge that's part of your SQE1 syllabus um, on board um, and enable you to tackle 
um, the whole SQE1 syllabus. So those are just some of the considerations. It's obviously not all of the considerations um, that you might might apply to you, but hopefully it gives you some good food for thought as to which course is going to be right for your particular circumstances. And as Matt says, um, if you need to discuss any aspect of that, our admissions team are more than happy to have a chat with you. Um, they've got knowledge of the courses, so they'll be able to give you some guidance on which course um, is right for you as well. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah. We are very nearly there now with the content of um, uh, what we're going to go through. So um, hopefully that gives you an understanding of why you should be choosing us. This slide, what we offer, the courses we have coming up and how to apply, nice and simple. So I, will, I won't spend too long on this, but you can obviously see the different dates in front of you. We have di different intakes at different points of the year. Now on the left hand side at the top, you can see our graduate foundation in law. We have 20 week and a 40 week coming up in early uh, kind of in February, so early in the year. So if somebody's interested in taking that transition sooner rather than later, we have those opportunities coming up. And on the right hand side, you can see um, our SLK programme, our SQE1 and LLM. So our LLM programmes start at the same time as the beginning of an SQE module, SQE1 module. So um, we have a variety of different dates again coming up. Now, what's key to think about with um, what we have in front of us, you'll see that on the GFL, we have the SQE1 course start dates, and then we have the assessments for SQE1 and SQE2. We make sure all of our programmes align for you to be able to continue to build on that knowledge. So with the GFL, um, we have them to finish relatively close to um, potentially new courses, um, or the SLK, LLM, um, or SLS courses will finish in time with... Um, an SQE assessment. So there's not a big gap or time period between um, the knowledge you build up and then when you need to apply it at the best uh, possible opportunity. Um, how you can apply to so all applications go through our website. We've got a nice QR code there. If you want to scan the screen, you can you can have a look at our application page. Um, for a course is starting in 2023, um, we would be looking for um, a minimum of a 2-2 qualification or, or equivalent or equivalent work experience. Um, we will look to um, applications for students who do hold a third class degree, um, but we would require you to have a kind of an interview with uh, somebody from our academic team. That is not an interview in the sense of um, you proving your worth to get onto the course. It's much more around us giving you the opportunity to get the understanding and, and the ability needed to complete what is a very intense qualification. So um, it's very much there to make sure that you're suited and booted, ready for the programme, as opposed to just you trying to sell yourself to get onto our course. Um, if English isn't your first language, um, we have um, require you to have um, uh, IELTS um, equivalency um, or uh, 6.5 um, with a minimum of six in each area. So um, if you're um, an undergraduate level in the UK and you're an international student, that should be fine as you would have needed to provide an English language exam. Uh, qualification to that university. So that's something to just to keep in mind. The last thing, these are not the only course dates that we have. We have more. The, so the, this is just a kind of a, um, a minimal list. So if you, there are other courses or dates that you might be interested in, head to our website and you can find those there. Um, lastly, um, for, for us to finish with is just what can you do to keep in contact with us or how can we keep in contact with you and help you? So um, we have calendar appointments. So if you would like to um, uh, have a chat with myself or Layla, our student recruitment officer. You can book that in and that can either be a Zoom call um, or a phone call. Um, we also have a LinkedIn study group. So if you want to find out more about the SQE, you want to hear from current students, you want to know what other webinars we have coming up, top tips, um, join that group. It's a really good group as well if you want to learn passively. So if you kind of want to sit in the background and just see information being drip fed through, that's a fantastic SQE group to join. Um, we also have a couple of upcoming webinars, um, one more this month and then one in January thus far. Um, for those who have the option to do the LPC, we've got a really good um, webinar in two weeks time looking at SQE v the LPC, which one might be best for you. And then we also have another one looking at our courses, starting your journey, um, how to get that journey kick started. Um, and we have that in um, early January. So that is a, a kind of 
the College of Legal Practice, what we do, what we offer, hearing from both an academic and a student's um, point of view. Um, at the moment, we have no questions that have come through. So um, as we've had a little bit of conversation and discussion halfway through, I think we will leave it there if no questions come through. I think for me, I'd just like to give a big thank you to uh, both Lashan and Sarah for joining us uh, for this webinar. Um, Sarah, thank you for your great insight into our programmes and then Lashan, your journey and your experience so far with us. Um, like I said, the, the um, recording and um, slides will be sent out after this, so you'll be able to view them after. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining. We hope you've enjoyed the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening.